IDW has stepped in to take up the mantle <laughs> there. They have announced the Legend of Korra. Actually, they announced they're going to be making multiple of these games, but the first one they said is... Of the series, or you mean... Based on Korra, okay. specifically. Uh, th this first one is Pro Bending, which if you are familiar with the show, that's the sport they play. It's sort of like their Quidditch, <laughs> where they get into an arena and they use their bending powers to shoot... Basically, it's basically soccer, but with powers, right? Was that it? It's. Let me I, read about it to you. I wouldn't say soccer. It's more like a, uh, like you know those gladiator games that we have, and like you push someone out of the ring, they're out. It's more like that, except I don't think they have to be balanced teams, but usually there's like one fire, one water, one earth. So there's resources for all of them on the field. It's their big sport. It's their. It's their, it's their football, right. both American and soccer, in terms of their popularity. So the way that uh, they're translating that is you're going to be drafting card decks, and then you're placing elemental tokens around the board in an, in an effort to overwhelm your opponent. Uh, and uh, your objective is to either advance the furthest forward as you can, or, as you said, knock the other person out of the ring. Uh, so, th I mean, this... It's, it sounds pretty, I think if, of all the things from Airbender, the reason it wasn't on my list in that segment was because I just couldn't come up with how it would translate to a board game, mm -hmm. but this was the one thing that I thought, oh, maybe you could tackle that. Oh, uh, I mean, it's already a game, so yeah, obviously. Right. <laughs> and I feel like unlike um, Quidditch, which you said, I feel, because the problem with Quidditch, I think, is the Seeker. Yeah, it doesn't. I think that's how do you what translate that. Yeah. And even besides but, that, there's a lot of like magic stuff that's hard to really make. But this I can you see is like you move a character here and it has a strike that goes one, two, three. It's almost more like a, like a Chinese checkers or something, you know? Right? Uh, yeah, well, I was actually thinking more along the lines of a lot of like um, Summoner Wars kind of, or like uh, uh, what was that game I'm blanking from Arcane Wonders? It's part of the. It comes in the long oh, uh, box. Onitama. Yeah, like where you have sort of the. Interesting, yeah. uh, and I could see that sort of going around with the different benders. Like, I would say like the Earth Bender probably is a little hard because he has to be at an Earth tablet to bend, but he's harder to push. The Fire Bender can bend anywhere, but he's weaker or something like that. You could do, and then what could be cool is if you actually draft people from the show that maybe have different abilities. Like I, I was thinking of, I, when I first saw this, I was thinking about a couple. Like one could. Uh, because he could uh, do some things I just realized I probably shouldn't say if you haven't watched it yet. <laughs> but, like, it's sort of an Spoilers. important <laughs> thing. But, like, it was not one of the three characters. It's one of their rivals, and you find out why he's doing so well. Because uh, he has a little secret advantage, and he, that, that could play into the game somehow. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it could have some fun stuff. So I do think, at least right now, this one, I, in terms of the rest of the universe, both Core and Avatar... It's definitely one that, once again, it's going to be interesting to... Yeah, what do you think the other... Because they, they just said Korra. I wonder what well, else they might do. The obvious... To me, the most obvious one was an RPG. Because being able to build a bender would be the coolest thing in the world and exploring the world. Mm -hmm. um, but outside of that, I definitely think if they, they should really take advantage of something that's a lighter. They shouldn't all be medium. There should be different difficulties and, and times. Like maybe one that's just a little fun thing, like... Uh, I'm trying to think of something silly. Like uh, the first thing that comes to mind is when uh, Angla's playing with the flute and the little gophers are popping up, and I don't know something. <laughs> I, I was thinking like in like in in Korra, like her tr it's just the training regimens with like the things that like the, the, the sticks the that move and spin, like something yeah. like a dexterity game. I, it sounds like they're going to be focusing on little as uh, sort of the uh, cryptozoic Rick and Morty approach. <laughs> well, I don't think that's a bad idea as long as you also take advantage of don't make them all like the same. Thing. Like one should be a lighter one that makes fun, like there's a or dexterity game. One can be more of an actual like the heavy war game or something. Yeah, well, it should should be interesting. Um, we we're, we're fans, so it's cool to see that universe being adapted to board games, and hopefully, mm -hmm. hopefully it is successful and takes off, and they find more cool things to do about it. If you enjoyed this video, it was just a snippet of our full-length podcast, which you can find on our YouTube channel every week. So please go ahead, like, and subscribe for more board game-related content coming at you in the future. And don't forget to check out RollForCrit.com, where we actually sell a lot of the games we talked about, as well as post news and all our other videos. Until then, I'm Will Keeler. I'm Jonathan Estes, and this is Roll for Crit. <laughs>